But one of the things that comes out of this failure is Crimean Tatar Ukrainian solidarity that we now see in a very mature form after 2014. So the book goes into some detail to talk about what's happening in this conversation and exchange between Ukrainians and Crimean Tatars after 1991, how many Crimean Tatars were writing, including um, the great pro stylist in Crimean Tatar culture, Shamil Aliadin, who wrote a great deal about the alliance between the Crimean Tatars and Khmelnytsky's Cossacks in the 17th century, and gets into great detail about Khmelnytsky speaking Crimean Tatar with the Khan, the Khan speaking Ukrainian in return. So this post-91 literature was investigating these relationships, um, maturing them, making them more sophisticated. And then obviously the book also focuses on uh, the Russian annexation of 2014 and how since then this relationship has become a major source a major narrative, a major plot in a great deal of contemporary Ukrainian culture, in the poetry of Serhii Zhadan, which is a focus in the book, in a film called Evge, or Dodomu, by a wonderful filmmaker named Nariman Aliyev. These are really important cultural exchanges that are leading to political innovations. So one of the things we've seen evolve is something called the Crimean Platform, which is an opportunity for the Ukrainian state and Ukrainian society to not forget what 2014 represents, how Ukraine needs to keep Crimea on its mind, as it were, how culture is doing that, and how things like granting national territorial autonomy to the Crimean Tatars would be a strategic response to this Krim Nash Russian chauvinism that claims Crimea for Russian power. But in claiming it so often, William, it's also reflective of a kind of insecurity, which is very common to empires. They take territory, but don't feel comfortable in it. So they need to constantly attest to that seizure. 